once around Varuna. So discovered in the year 2000 by Robert Macmillan as part of the Space Watch program, which keeps an eye out for dangerous falling objects, asteroids that might collide with the Earth. But it also, as a result of photographing the sky, gathers information about a whole lot of other objects. So this is a photograph here of the observatory at Kitt Peak. And it was the year 2000, so the designation is 2000. WR106. Now, it was lucky to find this one because it was moving against a particularly dense star field in the background, which was making for a difficult detection. And in fact, the computer software was unable to pick up this object moving against all those myriad stars. And so Macmillan actually spotted it the old fashioned way using the blink comparison technique where you alternate between two images taken a few days apart to see if anything appears to jump backwards and forwards from one image to the other. Now, having discovered it, it was then possible to track back through the library of images, the so-called pre-covery process, and find it all the way back to the Palomar images of 1954. So you get nearly 50 years worth of orbital arc, and that allows an excellent approach to uh, pinning down its orbit. The name Varuna from a Hindu god who ruled the sky seems quite appropriate. And it was given the minor planet number 20,000 to commemorate the 200th anniversary of the first minor planet to be discovered. Uh, the Dwarf Planet series. It's located in the Kuiper Belt, out beyond Neptune, in a near circular orbit, taking 279 years approximately, 40 to 45 astronomical units from the Sun, and with a small but significant tilt of 17 degrees. So similar tilt to that of Pluto, but its orbit is more circular and certainly keeps it well away from Neptune, uh, at least 12 AU at all times. Quite faint, another factor that made it difficult to pin down, magnitude 20, so that's several orders of magnitude less than uh, many objects that we uh, talk about in these talks. And this, in fact, is the best Hubble Space Telescope image so far. It's uh, really quite a challenging object. 650 to 700 kilometers in diameter. That's uh, 1 20th of the mass of Pluto. And that seems very low density. It's under the density of water, less than one gram per cubic centimeter, suggesting that these Kuiper belt objects, as this is a fairly common factor between them, are porous rather than fully compacted. The low mass tends to have a problem squeezing all of the voids out of the body. Just 43 Kelvin, very near absolute zero at very low temperature, and somewhat el elliptical in shape. Uh, the light curve reveals it's spinning in six hours, which is quite fast, um, although not unheard of for Kuiper belt objects, and that gives it this ellipsoidal shape with a length to width ratio of 1.6 there. So it probably looks a little bit like this. This is an artist's impression, of course. We just don't have any really good images yet. The light does show a dark color with some red. Just 13% of the light comes back, an albedo, as they call it, of 0.13. And that's nearly as dark as our moon, which is actually almost black. at uh, just around about 11%, I think. And the slight red tinge, as with most of these Kuiper Belt objects, are these tholins, these carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen polymers that uh, are somewhat irregular in, in structure and a complete mixture made by exotic chemical reactions caused by the low temperature and the excitation of the organic molecules like methane, um, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, water mixtures that uh, tend to get polymerized when they get hit by radiation. So cosmic rays are a main source of this. Um, 
there is some spectral evidence for water ice and that tends to suggest this is a young surface again because it's probably freshly exposed material but we're not quite sure in this case no sign of a companion so the picture on the right is entirely fanciful an analysis of the light curve though suggests there might just be one it's tentative 12 hour orbit somewhere in the 1200 to 2000 kilometer distance range but so far not even the Hubble Space Telescope has managed to pick this up. It's just a hint of a pattern in the light curve that might be the moon appearing and disappearing into eclipse. So this is another of these Kuiper Belt objects that seems to spin rapidly and that um, suggests an origin with its moon as well in a collision. And as I've said in my other Kuiper Belt videos, collisions were thought to be rare, but it seems that every object we look at has moons and moonlets around it, if not rings, and shows fresh surfaces, which suggest that uh, there has been a heating event recently, because these small objects at such deep in the deep freeze of the Kuiper Belt really should have cooled down by now unless something stirred them up in the recent past. So it's quite an interesting challenge. And of course, uh, the original theories were that the Kuiper Belt was much more dense in the early solar system in the first hundred million years, uh, but is now too dense, uh, sorry, too sparse in uh, objects for collisions to be likely at all due to the outwards migration of Neptune caused by interactions between the four giant planets as uh, things settle down in that formative period of the solar system. But uh, doesn't seem to quite stack up. They seem to have been many more collisions and they must have been recent. Otherwise, no fresh material, no current ring systems, and certainly no warmth inside the bodies of these Kuiper Belt objects. So, Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you've enjoyed that short video about the mysteries of the outer solar system. Thanks very much.